Although as interesting as single nucleotide polymorphism is, we can really only go after single sites that we're already aware of and targeting. And what we rather would like is to be able to study entire genomes, sequence everything. That is difficult though, it's very difficult because again, the molecules are too small and we have a sea of molecules and we don't really know where to start. Do you remember Fred Sager? I spoke about him very early in the class that he was the first one to determine the sequence of insulin and got the Nobel Prize for that. Well, Fred is one of the greatest scientists of the 20th century, he died a few years ago. But he came up with another very smart method in the 1970s that if you pretty much just run your PCR, remember the Kerry Mullis method to amplify DNA, but instead of the normal basis, A, G, C, and T, you mix them with some screwed up basis. What kind of base is this? So this is a base, there are two deoxys, so it's dideoxy. Do you remember that you had RNA and DNA? So ribonuclease and deoxyribonuclease. So this is a dideoxy ribonuclease. You don't have either of the oxygens here. That in particular will mean that this base can't really make a link to the next base. So if we incorporate this base, it stops there. We can't get further. That seems remarkably stupid. But Fred came up with something really smart here. Uh, this is a bit much to draw and I don't expect to know this by heart. So I'll, I'll use a, an illustration of it. So that if we start from the sequence out there and then we have this sea of normal amino acids and let's mix in either I only mix in one type of this one um, or I mix in all four. What's now going to happen is that when we start this process, um, it will be random, right? That occasionally I will pick one of these bad bases by mistake. And in that case, I will just get a short fragment and then it will stop. I will not get further. So assuming that I have 10 residues here, if I have a DD NTP here that matches base one, I will literally just get a segment of size one now and then. If I have one that matches residue two, I'm going to get segments of length two, etc. And then it's in principle, that means that I'm going to have things that are roughly of size one, two, three, etc. all the way up. If I now put those on a gel, a gel is a chemical way that I, I add electrophoresis and try to pull the molecules slowly down through a gel. And that means that the small molecules will move very fast, so I will get them at the bottom, while the heavy ones will stay at the top. I'll skip those for a second and show the other way to do it. Here we've done this for four separate cases. In the first one here, I only had the A, adenine base marked. And then here at the bottom, so at the bottom we start, those are the smallest fragments that went all the way. So I had something very small that might have been A, and then I don't have anything, and then I don't have anything, and then I have an A again, and maybe nothing, and then an A again. In the second column, I've done the same thing, but now I've made, uh, now I marked the G's with radioactive isotope, and then I've marked the C's, and then I marked the T's. So here I literally had to repeat the experiment four times. But once you've done that, we literally have the sequence here, right? So we can, if we now read these bands in order, and I'm well aware that it's going to be a bit difficult, but if we read these carefully, you can actually say what is the exact amino, uh, not amino acid, what is the exact base sequence in my DNA strand here. In practice today, this is what we would do if we did it manually. Nobody does, manual, uh, does this manually today. What you instead do is that you use fluorescence. But with fluorescence, we can control the wavelength. Remember things like the green fluorescent protein. So if I now have A, G, C, and T screwed up markers that will kill the uh, polymerization. What if I mark them with four different colors? If I do that, I just have to do one band here and then I can, rather than doing radioactive marking on films and everything, I can just have a laser excite them and then detect the fluorescence here super quickly with a photodiode. So then depending on what color I have, the next base is either A, G, C, G, A, C, A, G, T. And then I'd better devise a machine that could do this pretty fast. And trust me, people have. Fred got a second Nobel Prize for this so-called chain termination sequencing. Chain termination
sequencing. The reason why well, nobody called, at least I never called this chain termination sequencing, we just call it Sanger sequencing after Fred's. 